Good evening, friends and curious onlookers. Welcome to the opening monologue. I'm Phil Maki, and um, you might be expecting me to talk with you about cartoons, but tonight is a little bit different. There's an important issue that's been buzzing around the media, and um, after months of going back and forth on whether or not I should do anything about it, uh, ultimately, I couldn't sit on the sidelines anymore. So once this live stream is over, I'm going to be re-uploading to YouTube. And this is important enough that I'm asking you to share the video with your friends. Give it a like, better yet, comment on it uh, with your two cents and let's continue the discussion together. I'm talking tonight about artificial intelligence generated imagery or as many are referring to it, AI art. I'm so excited to have a real debate about this important issue with two fantastic artists. But before I bring out my guest tonight, I've prepared a little something to put us in the right frame of mind for this discussion. Hold for applause. Oh, never mind. Okay. Now, as an artist myself, um, there are obviously some biases present, and I'm well aware of that. Thank you. It is my intention tonight, however, to take as objective an approach to this topic as I can while still maintaining my own opinions. So I hope you'll join me at this uh, virtual table with your own open minds, because brace yourself, there's going to be ethics involved. If you aren't familiar with the specific current events I'm talking about, uh, well, for months now, the world has been experimenting with software known as AI image generators. The basic idea is that a person types a series of suggestions or topics and moments later, a picture magically appears. Imagine, people with zero to limited degrees of artistic ability can now bring ideas to life without that pesky detail of hiring an artist to do it for you. You don't have to spend hours mastering a craft because your imagination is realized nearly instantly. It sounds fantastic, but many don't realize um, that it's a computer and it's not creating anything, but rather sourcing the image from millions of photos and existing artworks from across the internet. Everything gets interpreted and mishmashed together into a kind of collage. Since technically the computer isn't creating anything, I should also point out that the user isn't creating anything either. No no more than if a person went to order a burger and asked for extra pickles and no onions and then took credit for making it. There are all sorts of problems with this issue. The most talked about is perhaps um, the fact that it's being done without permission of the original artists. I'm talking about plagiarism at its best here. It is tempting to say, hey man, wait a minute. What's the big deal? What do you even care about this so much for? Well, to that I say, this is an issue that transcends race, religion, identity. It doesn't care who you are. It doesn't care how much money you make or how much power you have. Even in its seemingly benign form, the potential for danger is not only present, but I would argue already upon us as a species. Now, somehow I remain optimistic for the future, but I feel compelled to point this out. In my opinion, art in its many forms is the purest expression of the human spirit. The idea behind technology is to remove tedious tasks so that we can have time to focus on the more noble and pleasurable pursuits in life. But the way this specific form of technology is being used threatens to play house in our own visage, leaving us with what exactly? Ultimately, I believe in humanity's creative spirit, but I also trust it to get misused. Now, this issue has all sorts of arguments in both directions, I know that. I feel like in the past few months, I have heard all of them, and with the help of my two guests, we're going to look at some of those things tonight. First off, he can be heard in games like Justice in My Time at Sand Rock and Foolish Mortals, and uh, also from an upcoming animated film, Star Wars The Chosen One, it's voice actor and comic artist 
Gerald Hill. Hey, Gerald. And uh, next, I've got comic book creator and cartoonist uh, who has an, an amazing graphic novel coming out later this year called Sons of Ashgard, Ill Met in Elmgard. Please welcome Matt Went. Hey. Hey, we're all here. The technology worked, and I'm so excited to actually have you guys in my virtual space. Happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Thank you. So um, I guess let's get started with, let's just start with an easy one. Um, I, I've got a few sort of um, questions and topics here. So why does this thing even exist? And like, who is it actually helping? Either either one of you want to take that. <laughs> huh. Or is that, a, maybe we should start smaller than that. Uh, how about, how about, Things like this make make life go faster, make art happen faster. So I guess the question I'll ask you then is, why do we need to be faster? We we live in a world now of instant gratification, and um, everybody's looking for a shortcut. And so there there's all these different ways of you know well, this cuts, you know, cuts corners and it makes production um, faster, X, Y, and Z. And while that's, that is a, I guess, honorable goal, the path that they're using with this AI is, is not the way. <laughs> so. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's, you asked, who does it help? Well, it helps, you know, businesses because they don't mm -hmm. have to pay anybody. They can crank stuff out faster, but it also helps the lazy and the unimaginative. Uh, I mean, it, it sounds pretty harsh, but I used to teach uh, a class in comic art and I've, I've, I've seen a lot of excuses and, you know, and I've, I, in my time, I've dished out my own excuses for laziness, but this is on a, a whole different level. Mm -hmm. like a, a, almost a scary level. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about shortcuts. And, um, you know, obviously a lot of, this is a lot of morality stuff, uh, which I, you know, at the end of the day, uh, it's to each their own, right? Everybody will decide what their level of morality is, which I think is what makes it such a dicey subject. But mm -hmm. um, let's talk about cheating before AI. And I'm saying cheating, like cheating. Mm -hmm. Um what sort of cheats existed before this? What what sort of things did we feel like was maybe like, uh, it's a gray area? Um, in our community, one thing that I hear so much um, is tracing. Um, you know, um, whether it's reference, you know, reference, you know, references in there, but I, that's always been a heated debate that I've seen, you know, between, um, other artists that they can, you know, consider cheating. And then also just like, especially and then digital art, when digital art, you know, um, you know, started, um, a lot of people think that, oh, you just do this on the pad, and, you know, and it just happens for you. No, no, it doesn't. Um, so yeah, those, I think those are the two that I hear the most um, debated, but the, nowhere near this level with the AI thing. Yeah, with, you know, the tracing aspect, there's, there's still like hand to, though I don't agree with it, but there's still hand to image. You know, you're, you're essentially, you know, we all start out tracing stuff as little kids and it's mm -hmm. just kind of like where you start getting your legs. I get that. But yeah, like he said, it, it, this is on a different level. This is, you're taking someone's style. Mm -hmm. Like there are Gerald, I'm sorry. Gerald mm -hmm. has his specific style. Everybody knows him for it. And then some guy comes along and goes, you know, I want to draw Batman versus Garfield, but in Gerald's style type type. All they have to do is type it in. They don't have to sit and study mm -hmm. his work, study how he came up with those lines really, you know, cause you know, you got people that ape other artists, right? Yeah. You know, Todd McFarlane started, you know, aping like, what was it? uh art adams and mm -hmm. you know it's just we all did you know find our influence somewhere we start trying to see how did they do this and mm -hmm. we all start 
creating based off that. And some people go like strict. They're almost a photocopy of so-and-so. Yeah. And some people from evolve that point, from right, yeah. yeah, they evolve and they come from it. And with this AI art, you're, you're just basically taking that essence, slapping it on something and calling it your own. Mm-hmm. Have you guys seen some of the um, more realistic stuff to come out of AI generators where it's it's sort of difficult to tell if you're looking at a photograph or not. Have you guys seen that stuff? Well, right. <laughs> Gerald, Gerald brings up the fingers, which I'm so glad you did. Go ahead and tell us what you're talking about, Gerald. Yeah, well, usually when I'm <laughs> the realistic, when I see the realistic stuff, that's like the first thing is like, well, there's like six or seven fingers. That's the, for some reason, AI has not figured that out yet. But um, yeah, that's always a telltale thing that I'm always looking for when I see something. And yeah. Um, so it's just one of those funny things. I'm gonna is pull, I'm is gonna it still it. pretty prominent or is yeah. it because yeah. I, 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 I thought they it. were starting to get a hang of that, you know, where it's like, you know, OK, there's five fingers and they don't look like sausages now or whatever. <laughs> you know, I, I didn't I, I didn't know it was still a thing. The place that I know the place I notice it a lot is when there's multiple like characters or people in the same image yeah. that's when i know that's when i noticed the finger thing a lot okay um, and then like the at certain angles the eyes get wonky sure uh, so but i'm gonna pull up, i'm actually gonna try to pull a photo up if i can um here in just a second to give an example of it mm-hmm. um but let's talk a little bit about about the dangers of because i don't know if you guys have noticed but there will be these images showing up on social media mm-hmm. and the result uh the people who are commenting on it are just absolutely blown away blown away yeah. and and they're just commenting on just um as if all of these things happened but mm-hmm. which you could ask well what does it matter it's it's just a fantasy image who cares if they, if they you know are taken with it but to me i'm looking at like long term problems it's, it's the same thing as like when deep fake when deep fake you know um you know, start it like you could just literally put anybody's faces on anything and, you know, make them do whatever, say whatever. Um, to me, that that's this is no different. It's you can. Yeah. To be able to just type in whatever you want. And then, like I said, unless you're really following the art, you know, art scene, like you say, your average person is just going to look at the picture and they're going to comment what's in the picture they're not going to be looking for extra fingers and wondering if this is ai art or if it's real let's be real people on the internet short attention pants spans they're not going to look up stuff they don't care they just take it for what it is what they what's right in front of them so yeah so the deep can you talk about what a deep fake means because i'm just just for folks that are watching this. right okay so deep fake is a technology where they can uh, you know i don't know the ins and outs of it but they essentially anybody can record something with their face and then overlay you know tom cruise's face on it or will smith's face on it or anybody you know anybody they want and then they can either and um even their voice and uh and it looks you know um crazy it's and it's like again what is it uh what's, what's the phrase um the road to hell is paved with good intentions yeah that's the phrase yeah and i always feel like that's what these things start out as as oh this would be great if we can do this like you know the luke skywalker i mean it's been a while i'm pretty sure i could talk about luke skywalker on mandalorian yeah i think you're fine <laughs> what <laughs> but, you're fine. <laughs> you know they use that that you know s- similar technology to give us young luke skywalker and and to me that's fine because that's you know you get mark hamill's permission or whoever you need this and that and you use it in that way but to just have this technology in the hands of anyone um i always try to be an optimistic guy but i just don't trust humanity a lot of times so, yeah yeah we want to sell our deodorant oh it would be great if we had uh tom cruise as a spokesman yeah uh, we mm-hmm. can't afford him but we can get jerry he can just kind of mimic the action mm-hmm. we'll put tom cruise face right on there right yeah uh, there it is. So, so okay. this is an example. I, I was, I was listening to you, but I was also trying very quickly to get this <laughs> image on my, under my uh, uh, screen here. Um, oh, that's my graduating class. So, <laughs> so some interesting things to to <laughs> <laughs> so interesting things to point out in this image. There is an extra arm. 
<laughs> um, on the bottom right, there's an extra arm. Uh, there is a number of extra digits on multiple hands. Multiple sunglasses. Yeah. Yeah, right. Sunglasses on top of the head and on the right, which someone could ex explain as like, oh, well, this is simply a, a comedic thing, right? Um, but again, there that when this when I went to go find this image, there's just people praising these fictitious individuals. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, I I think there's a real inherent danger. This goes beyond. Um, art this is this is some sort of i don't know it, it the potential to me for bad stuff is is just astronomical most of what i see especially in the 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 what are these like the realistic looking stuff though it looks evil and i and i i know what you mean when you say it, that. It's, it's like i gotta you know it's very like the art is itself also when i do comic art and stuff it's all very soulless and you could tell mm -hmm. but this looks like it's like these women do not look like pleasant people they, mm -hmm. they you look like you'd walk in the room and you'd feel a heavy darkness in the room wow that's a really good take on it i i i like that you're pointing that out because there are some images where it's not immediately obvious like this Mm -hmm. But that same feeling you just described, I also have gotten from other images where I'm yeah. looking at it, I'm going, there is something just off and I can't but, explain what it and is. It, and it goes back to what you said in the beginning in your monologue is, is art is one of the most personal forms of expression, you know, that, you know, that we, we take something that's in our mind and we work, we work for years to be able to convey that you know, to an audience. So there's that, there's that soul art, you know, we put ourselves into that art and you can, when you see it, that's why you feel things. When you look at, you know, some of these classic paintings that, you know, have been around for, you know, centuries, you, there's a feeling that art brings you when it's made by a human being, you know, versus yeah. these things that are cobbled together by source, you know, zeros and ones or whatever, and this, you know, thrown together. You know, it's it's always jarring for me when I see it, you know, no matter how good it looks, you know, like right. I'm a huge Power Rangers fan. So and I seen like when sadly, when we lost Jason David Frank, the Green Ranger, yeah. you know, there were a lot of, um, you know, people expressing their, you know, their, you know, the, the love for him. But I started seeing a whole bunch of AI art of him cropping up all over oh, the place. Wow. And but I, and I and I could look at it and see like, man, that he has. Obviously, yeah, that's Tommy, that's the Green Ranger, that's Jason A. Ray, but there's the the life in his face, you know, is 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 off. And there's so I mean, yeah. he's dead and the art looks dead. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's scary. Yeah. Um, I, I'm gonna present with you guys to you guys right now some of the arguments that I've I've been reading because I'm a glutton for punishment, and one of the <laughs> things I enjoy doing is going out on the internet and finding randos talking about this and mm -hmm. engaging in discussion with them because I, I really want to know. I, I truly do want to know what where people are with it because mm -hmm. um, there are artists who who just come at this subject uh, from a completely different frame of mind. So uh, the the first the first opposition I'm going to present to you, I want to hear what you guys think about this. Is and these are artists who I know some of them personally, some of them who I've never met before have said to me, "Well, Phil, um, I use it as a starting." tool starting point so that i can give myself something that i can work off of in other words i couldn't think up of an idea on my own and so i'll type things into a prompt it generates something i will take what i saw generated and then i'll go ahead and make my own thing to which my question then is as an artist you had one job are you telling me you couldn't do the one job but that's anyway i want to hear what you guys think about that i was going to that sorry <laughs> i was gonna say that i was just like yeah. my first knee-jerk reaction to that is that's what's make that that's what makes you an artist is right. it's not you know it's it's people only see the end result you know and they oh that's art but they don't see us you know going through our daily lives but and you know going through the motions but we're really in here we're what what we're going to draw 
it's already all, nine times out of ten it's been in here for weeks yeah. or you know longer than that yeah. so to yeah. to skip that you know to say oh i don't have i can't i couldn't come up with anything like i don't know about you but if i got hired by you know commissioned by someone to do some artwork and i just i got nothing i got i can't think of anything yeah then that's that's the job you you know you you just you you failed that first step of the job and you know the like i said creation starts here and 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 here in my opinion mine and so, art so so whenever i get in that artist block mode and i can't think we all hit that at mm -hmm. some point i have books and movies and things mm -hmm. around me that i can draw inspiration from mm -hmm. You know, and but I have I have to go put in the work, and you know, like right. I have I have reference books all around me that it's just like mm -hmm. I can't think of what to draw, and I'm gonna read this comic book, and suddenly you know it's like some scene will in inspire this thought in my head, and then I'll go, mm -hmm. hey, that's kind of what I'm thinking, but you're still engaging personally, and the computer, and you, you know, like your your friends say, you know, I use it as a starting point they're just how it's essentially like having someone else just do the work for you, you know, like, you know, do the research work, I guess, you know, whereas we all right. used to do our term papers and stuff, going to the library and, you mm -hmm. know, or in going on the internet and looking up stuff. Now they just go computer, bring me my <laughs> idea. You know? yeah. Yeah. When I first heard that argument, my, my gut reaction was, you mean all of creation and all of the art that exists wasn't enough for you? Mm -hmm. yeah yeah <laughs> you you needed something else to get you going like was I, was everything that exists not enough again i just i go back to the laziness I, 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 how what is your merit as an artist if if you're just succumbing to this you know well, this is what i'm just gonna do instead but, i don't want to have what to i'm sorry go ahead. Oh, go ahead i was just gonna say what just while while we're on this i think part of it that feeds into this is social media it's it, it's mm. when social media first started and being an artist on social media you gotta you gotta draw something every day you gotta post something every hour or this and this and this and 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 that in itself is a problem that takes away you know a lot from art because not now you're not just you're not giving your best work you're just i gotta get this out just so people can just so people and and, oh. and it's, so i think that this ai art plays a lot into that it's like oh how can i get to that faster how can i get to this oh this picture only got two likes oh this is uh i didn't post today so i don't get this so i think everybody is looking for that that shortcut you know and to stay to stay relevant but in my opinion mm. if people find your art the right people will find your art the right people will be the fans you know i very much rather have 75 real fans than you know, of my work than just a bunch of, you know, bots. Yeah. About 75,000 likes. Okay. <laughs> that's, you know, that's, um, and I, like I said, I think all this, all this is, is, you know, stems from. So that's a really a of interesting that. take Gerald. You're, it almost sounds like you're saying this, uh, movement is a symptom yep. of social media and the pressures of being a, a constantly relevant creator is that right yep i agree i think it's, it's as a creator you got to constantly stay relevant and then there's people like i said that want to take all these shortcuts and then you got the people on the outside who are like oh you know this is just it's just more stuff in their feed for them to scroll through and you know thumbs up and um like so yeah i just mm. yeah it's uh then you get the poser crowd who come in and just go comic book artist that seems like yeah a cool thing Think i don't have an artistic bone in my body but computer makes me an artist yeah. well i'm glad you brought that up matt because uh in one of the discussions i was jumping into yesterday uh morning because again i like to start my day with getting frustrated <laughs> yes. uh, the the argument was being made uh that comic book artists have been known to trace uh for years and they were they were qualifying ai art with well they're cheating by tracing so how, how is this any different my response to that is it's not because the artist wanted to trace a lot of nine times out of ten when it comes to you know comic books from what i hear from fellow comic book artists it's it's that 
that pressure, that that grind to you got to crank this out. We, you know, we need deadlines. You know, over you know overworked and all that kind of stuff. So then they they have to come up with you know quick ways. You know, turn you know turnarounds. Um, like I said, but that's my experience on speaking to those artists that have you know that have done that and. Um, it's not like they chose to, in my opinion, and and from what they tell me, it's because, man, we're overworked. We got to meet these deadlines, and you know, I can sit here and try to draw Sp Spider Man swinging this way, or I can oh, put this in here and you know trace it and just tweak a few things and then send it off. But you know? something nice about about the industry, the comic book industry, if we're gonna if we're gonna bring it into that world, um, I always felt like there was a series of checks and balances within the artists themselves that like if if somebody was, as Matt was saying, aping somebody earlier, um, that would get called out pretty quickly by other artists. Right. Yeah, um, but it still it won't. It doesn't stop it. <laughs> and it doesn't stop it. Yeah, I've seen I've seen, um, you know, a comic book artist that does, you know, um, a Spider-Man and there was a panel that somebody had captured screen captured and put it side by side with you know um another spider-man from like decades ago and it was literally the same the same you know same pose same everything right and um yeah so i just i think some i i just it, it comes down to some morality in my opinion i think that some artists won't or they refuse or you know do it only if you know put to extreme circumstances but then you have some people again just lazy they want a shortcut they want to um piggyback off somebody else's work there was an artist uh mm -hmm. oh, it was probably like 10 years ago i want to say it's david mack but i don't know for sure they were doing avengers and someone broke down like went through the book and most pages had some art that he swiped from somebody else mm -hmm. and like because they're group shots of like 12 characters and, and and he had gone through and they they found each image that he used and it was almost like a direct overlay he mm -hmm. just changing out certain characters where wolverine standing he puts the punisher or whatever and you know they like you, you were talking about the checks and balances that got called out pretty quickly mm -hmm. and it was a famous guy that did it like someone that's that's pretty well known and people jumped all over it and it was it was something to it was you know facebook was getting starting to get pretty hostile at the time so i remember making the rounds on there <laughs> oh check out this loser what he's doing yeah so so that kind of leads me into the lawsuit there's a i believe a lawsuit being filed right now by three artists uh i don't know if all three of them are women but i think at least two of them are um and, you know, I, I don't know what the result of that lawsuit's going to be. I'm not even sure, you know, who, I, I guess they're going after the creators of the, the art generators themselves. Um, but that makes me wonder, okay, you can have laws, you can have all the laws in the world, but you have to have somebody enforcing them, right? Mm -hmm. So how do you even, in, I mean, if you have any thoughts on this, how would we even enforce this? What do you, and if we can't enforce it on a big level, or we don't know what that looks like, what does it look like on the indie level? What do you think we can do as independent creators to kind of call things out and, and um, you know, weed out the cheaters, so to speak? Hmm. Is there anything we can do? It doesn't seem like. No, yeah. At yeah. this point, it's. You know, my biggest thing is to, you know, keep your soul in your art because like you know we, we'd established earlier it doesn't look right mm -hmm. so lead lead by example is what i'm hearing you say yeah right? and yeah you, you would hope the audience would also go that looks like phil's art but right something's off yeah and right like as an artist that was like one of the the one of my proud moments is when i started to get comments about hey i'm i know that I know that was your, I saw something. I knew it. I knew that was your art. I knew that yes. was your artwork. Mm -hmm. That's like, oh man, like, thank yeah, you, yeah. you know, to, to be able to like, you know, cause you know, like I said, we, we all start, we all have our, you know, our inspirations and, um, you know, mine was, um, John Romita, you know? So when I first started drawing, everything I drew looked like, you know, was similar to, you know, Romita's then, um, 
I'm, I, his name just, oh, Joe Madurer. Like, I love, you know, so then I evolved to that. But at some point, as I'm like, okay, I need to become my own artist. I need, you know, I want to figure out, you know, what style I like and what, what I want my work to look like. So when people start to, you know, notice that, it's a huge compliment versus, but now it's like, oh, um, like you said, I would be devastated if I saw some AI artwork that looked like mine. Sure. You know, like, and it's this, I always tell people art is already undervalued. So mm -hmm. artists are undervalued and, and it, it just, it, excuse my language. It pisses me off that they keep making these ways to cut us out, to cut us out of the picture because, okay, I'm a comic artist and a voice actor. And unfortunately, they have AI voice that that that's going on right now in the in the oh. voice acting community. It's AI. There are, there's been some large video game publishers that have been using AI voices. Really? Wow! And so it's like, come on, man! It's like, it just seems like punching down, doesn't it? Like, yeah. And it's like, where does it stop? Like, where does it <laughs> yeah. end? Right. Um, it's like everybody here. wants to be an artist, but no one wants to value an artist for what they are. No one yeah, wants to pay an it. artist for what they're, you know, for what they're worth. Yeah. But everybody wants to do it. Everybody, you know, everybody yeah. wants to, um, you know, get their hand in it. And and I get it. I know because for years I've 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 met people like, man, that's great. I wish I can draw. I didn't just wake up, and I tell them I didn't just wake up and just was able to do this. This is not like, yeah, I think I I do believe that some of us are born with talents or gifts, but we still have to work to cultivate it, to get better, to improve that craft. If we don't, you know, so it's not, so, and I just, it, it chaps, it just makes me mad when I see people that want to take that shortcut. Like I have, you know, when I do commissions for people, I'm always surprised that people don't, uh, don't know how long it takes to do certain, you know, to do artwork, to do certain, they think that, you know, it's just, oh, here it is. And like, no, there's, you know, I've spent, days countless hours on one on one comic book panel at some point just trying to get it right you know or trying to you know and on an image that would arguably will arguably looked at for, for a few seconds, seconds. yeah yeah it might and be even covered up by a word balloon right <laughs> right <laughs> right and it's right. like man it's like but we love it as artists that's you know yeah. i tell people like to be a comic artist you kind of have to be you got to love it because it's it so much back. work and it's so it's it's you know i guess i like to torture myself because that, <laughs> you know that's um it's not for the faint of heart that's what i, I would tell I, you know i tell a lot of people and and that's i think that's the problem people right. aren't willing they want the end result but they yeah. don't want that hard work they don't want you know to put in the hours the blood sweat and tears yeah. and I just <laughs> you said it, Gerald. That I, art, I, I, without getting too melodramatic, to me is suffering. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I don't mean to, to, you know, put anybody on a pedestal or anything, but truly, like, it, you are pouring yourself, mm -hmm. literally pouring yourself. You're pouring hours. You're pouring your health. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, if you're if you're hunched over a desk for a but, long period of time. Yeah. I mean, if you're you're skipping bathroom breaks, you're skipping meals, you're skipping time with loved ones and friends. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's you are you are literally sacrificing so that you can put something out of out of you into that is world. into the world that is in a sense bigger than even you are. Yeah, and it's and it's and that's daunting in it in it in itself. You and know, no one wants artist. to do that. You're right. You're right. They want the result. They yeah. want. They want the admiration. They want praise on social media. And it does seem like we're in a, an era of means to an end ism, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Like, well, if I can get this and that's how I can get it, then that's how I'm going to get it. Right. right. I, somebody asked me, um, a, a, an artist friend of mine asked me recently, you know, why do you think this is happening now? You know, ha have people always been this way? And my answer to that is, I think they actually always have been this mm -hmm. way. The problem was we had a series of built-in gatekeepers. Yeah. And it wasn't 
people gatekeepers. It was, well, if you don't have enough money, then you can't buy these tools. But that's yeah. the tool started getting cheaper, right? Yeah. But then it became, well, if you don't have enough hours to, to dedicate to something, then here's shortcut programs that will take these tasks and, and cut that task down if you do it digitally to you know minutes instead of hours and or if you don't have time to go to college and and study under you know the masters or or uh, learning mm -hmm. about them or whatever then you can just do these other here's a youtube video right giving you the the, the bullet points of what you could have learned going to school so mm -hmm. all these things have been whittling every, everything down i i mm -hmm. think you were, were right gerald when you said that like it's almost a product of where things have already been going mm -hmm. Because, but where does it go then? Where, where does it head? Is it going into a place where we'll think something and it'll just appear? We don't have to even type anything? Or is it going to go to a place where the machines are creating for themselves and then we are left not, you know, not doing anything? Oh, or... we've seen that movie. That's when Skynet comes in. Yeah. Just stepping That's on the... our balls. And... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been there. <laughs> well, I mean, so so do you, do you see yourselves... Uh, spitting in the face of progress and saying i'm still going to do this i'm still going to draw by hand i you know, even if you are using a, a digital tablet you're still drawing i mean that i'm not going to hate on you know i'm not this conversation is not let's hate on all technology but right we're using technology right now to communicate across you know distances and i'm mm -hmm. certainly thankful for that um but just uh, like, how do you guys oh i'm sorry i was a good sorry i was gonna say how, how do you guys feel like you're gonna keep going forward uh from here I don't see me AI benefiting me at all. Okay. Um, just in that sense, there's, yeah. there's things, I think, again, it's, it's morality. It's a question of morality and, um, and it, it kind of, kind of requires a look inward is what, what are your boundaries? What are your limits? You know, um, you know, I'm not going to be that guy that's going to be hammering on everything everybody hey you use an ai art stop using ai art you stop using the art i want to but you know i'll be um, that guy yeah yeah um but i just won't support it i don't yeah that's what i mean I, yeah i just i can't i i yeah like i said to me a tool doesn't do the job for you it helps a tool should be something that helps you do the job that you know how to do already Made like and that to me that's I've, I've started I as a kid there was no you know pen pen and paper I I took what I learned from because people always ask me what's the difference between you know different a um digital art I'm like nothing I still need to know how to draw like that's that the 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 the, the main thing is I still need to be an artist. I still need to have be able to have those creative ideas. I still need to be able to the only thing and the tool is, oh, instead of an eraser, I just have a digital eraser or I can undo something that, you know, back in the day I would draw. I remember I remember being in school drawing this um, this picture and this this jerk kid walked past me on purpose and shove my, you know, shove my arm. And I drew, you know, I put a it made me put like a big, you know, pencil mark that I couldn't erase no matter how many times I tried it. So the picture was effectively, you know, so digital art. Yay for that, you know. But I still need to be an artist. It, it doesn't do it for me, you know. Even on my un, on my un, in uh, days I'm not motivated, I wish I could just sit down in a chair. And but what people I think what people don't understand is that there's something magical, and I'm, I I I know I get deep about a lot of stuff, but there's something so magical, something so rewarding to spend, like you said, spend hours and countless days and you know, hand cramps and back, back aches, but to look at that end result, I remember picking up my first published comic book from the printer. There was no feeling like that. Like, this is something I, I did. And it's, it's here, it's physical, it's tangible. And I just, I don't see how, when you use AI, AIs, anything that I think you, you lose that. Like, cause well, that's, you didn't the great, do it. that's the great deception, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Is, is you, you remove the struggle, mm -hmm. but the struggle is often where the reward comes from. Yes. Mm -hmm. So by removing the struggle and simply jet setting yourself to praise town, mm -hmm. you're getting praise and it's not warranted. 
I, I wonder what that does to the receptors in the brain because it, it, it can't feel as rewarding. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine it would feel as rewarding. Out of, okay, I'll go out on a limb and say the people that are uh, that are utilizing that to that degree are probably so constantly empty that, you know, like, like he was mentioning the social media, you know, they all need likes all the time. They're they're constantly like trying to absorb something they can never absorb. So it's not going to change when they do this AI art. They're going to get, you know, a couple, you know, that's great, attaboy. And they're going to think, oh, but they're going to still feel empty they're not going to feel like mm -hmm. gerald said they're not going to feel his that reward of just like you know i suffered a lot this is the result how satisfying I, you know i could just sit back and look at it and just whew. so One is this a minute. phase you think you, you think they're going to get bored with this and they're going to move on from this and find some other fix i don't know because you're we're generating more and more people that are just jumping right into this they're mm -hmm. not I don't know. Yeah. You know, like, like, like he said, we're, we're getting, becoming obsolete you know, or they're trying to make us obsolete. And mm -hmm. so people are going to look and see, you know, at the, for, you know, real artists, it's still kind of a, a grind to get in there. And mm -hmm. they're going to like, well, that's, I don't want that. And that's the, and that's the, oh, the part I hate is this is not an easy job. It's not an easy career to have. <laughs> Why would anybody, right. want, why would they I, covet this? <laughs> look, there are times where I'm like, Lord, why did you make me this way? Because oh, this wow. sucks sometimes. Yeah. But we're at the same time. Something we can never truly, if we're honest, master. Right. We're and he's building it. Yeah. But yeah. It, the minute you're done, I don't feel you, Gerald. The minute I'm done with it, with a piece, I'm, I'm almost instantly like, the moment of joy is this like sliver and yeah. then I'm instantly on to the next. On to the next thing. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's, but that's a part of it. That's the, you know, that's yeah. a, it's, it's, it's so, it's such a big yeah. part of it. And I just, uh, just, just I, don't know if, I don't know if you guys watch um, uh, Bill Maher at all, but I'm, I'm a, I'm a fan of, of Bill Maher and uh, he had Andrew Yang on the other night. Mm -hmm. who, who if, if you may recall, ran for president uh, a while back. Mm -hmm. um, and Andrew was citing people that are friends of his who are in the, the business world. Mm -hmm. And they were referring to um, the version of AI known as chat GPT, which, uh, again, for those who don't know, uh, is similar to what we're talking about tonight. But mm -hmm. instead of creating visual imagery or, or art, it, it creates a uh, text so you can oh, give yeah. it a prompt and say, write me an essay about, you know, and you'll give it some bullet points mm -hmm. and it will come up with an essay about that. And it, it's, I mean, maybe at a fourth, fifth grade skill level. Um, but that, but it's been getting exponentially better in the last few months. And so Andrew Yang was talking about these businessmen that he knows telling him that they're like in the face of this, development we're probably going to be cutting 40 percent of our staff See. so it's going after white collar jobs it isn't just artists who are at risk anymore yeah. so the reason why i get so dramatic about this topic is because and when people are so flippant online saying what are you so worried about like it's not a big deal i don't know how people can't see the big picture with this but see no the problem with the world that and this is the problem with the world where <laughs> that we're going towards that the world's going to and it's a, it's a very bad route is if it doesn't affect me i don't care right. and no and 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 that i hate that mentality because there used to be a time where you cared about your brother and your sister you know you know or you know you you took the time to understand you know why this thing is this or this thing but now it's all it's it's these truck you know, all these different tribe mentalities that mm. just they're over here. I'm over here. I'm down here. And but like you said, like I said, yeah, we're talking about art. And now and now it's reaching out into voiceover and it's not going to stop. So you probably it, saw it in voiceover on social media when people would would. Uh, I don't know what program does it, but I, I see it a lot on Instagram where they'll that the words are on the screen and it sounds like a robot is saying yeah. the words. Mm hmm. I, that's where I first noticed. That's where it started. But that's where, okay. 
I've been and I, I as a as a voice, I stopped using those just f- for that for that simple fact. It's like, oh, I'm just going to narr- I'm going to just do my own narrations, you know, whatever on my, right. over my social media videos. But um, um, I lost, yeah, I lost it. I'm just. I'm sorry, man. I didn't. Mean no, to... no, no, no. You're fine. No, you. Oh, I was just going to say, like, I I came across. I was telling my wife, I came across a video the other day that it's like this motive. Like everybody's using it as a sound overlay, but it's. Goku from the Dragon Ball Z, um, you know, universe, yeah. and he's saying, you know, motivational things, but it's clearly not Sean Schimmel. I'm hearing it, I'm hearing it, and I'm like, this sounds off. Like how he's, you know, I've watched thousands of hours of Dragon Ball, so I feel like I know Sean Schimmel, <laughs> you know, as Goku and Chris Abad as Vegeta, and uh-huh. it was just something so off about it. But I don't think the average person would know, and that's the scary thing is like, yeah. Sean Shimon is the voice of Goku. This is his livelihood. This is so for anybody to just be able to type in and take take that from him, you know, and you know, use they, it, all, they, they only use have it to, to get fool. clicks on their videos or whatever. It's they only saying? have to fool most of us, Gerald. They only have to fool most yeah. of us. Yeah. I, you know, as, as ho- hopeless as this seems sometimes, I, I am also reminded that large groups of consumers unified under a cause actually can change the course yeah. of, of history mm-hmm. you just have to get people unified right and and so while i don't have an answer for this problem for us tonight i do want to point out that i i truly believe that the answer starts in conversations like these yeah um yeah. i i think I c- continuing this kind of discourse is probably the best way for us to to arrive at a conclusion i don't know what that conclusion right. is i'm not i'm not trying to say it's doom and gloom and that's the end of it mm-hmm. um but i do we, think we need to consider doom and gloom we right. could get them to fix ugly sonic <laughs> oh well that's a good example actually yeah. that's a really good example because that's a that's a movie and by all accounts why would people who make a film you know feel like they have to change their art just because a bunch of people online complain but thankfully Mm-hmm. They they did, and we yeah. we got rid of a hideous version yeah. of Sonic the Hedgehog. So there's that. <laughs> oh, he showed up in Chippendales Rescue Ranger. Yeah, oh, that was hilarious. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, quick diversion on that. I got maybe 20 minutes into that film, and I I couldn't finish it. I I, I really oh, really? tried. Huh? Oh, I'm surprised. Like Is Sonic he... the Hedgehog, or no, 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 the Chippendales Chip Rescue Rangers oh. movie. I, I could not watch the whole thing. I don't know. I, maybe I'll try again. But I, I was just like, this is not Roger Rabbit. Quit trying to be Roger Rabbit. <laughs> um, before we get too close to being out of time, because we're not mm-hmm. out of time yet, but I but I'm I'm noticing the the big hand is moving to where I wanted to pay attention to. Um, I did want to give everyone an opportunity to get to know both of you a little bit more and how they can support actual real living artists, which is a good thing. I'm all about that. Um We'll start with Matt. Matt, you have a uh, really amazing gr- graphic novel that I've been watching you make. I feel like for centuries. <laughs> Is that right? It, nah, yeah, maybe it feels like it someday. Yeah. How long has Sons really. of Ashgard been in production, sir? Um, we started pitching it to <clears throat> publishers, I think, in 2018. Um, officially started doing the the work for it um because we got dark horse to publish us that's huge man in 20 late 2019 and then i had a little uh nine month time off because of a certain world event yeah so i was able to i don't know what you're talking about (laughs) (laughs) it didn't didn't affect me no Uh, (laughs) but uh so I was able to, to really like just focus on that, but it was 140 pages. So I had, it was a lot. <laughs> and you are the artist and author. You're the, you're the, no, sole... I'm not the author. I'm the, oh. uh, Chad Corey is the author. This is his, his baby. I am the artist. I, I do the pencils and inks. There you go. I just wanted to sneak that in there when no one was paying attention. <laughs> you didn't see it. I saw it. Pre-order on Amazon, Sons of Ashgard, Ill Met in Elmgard. Uh, if you if you like fantasy Lord of the Rings style stories with uh, rodents, 
Is that an appropriate description? They're they're, they're Viking squirrels are the are the main. Uh, I'm so yeah. I'm so you had Viking me at everything you said. Yeah. There, there's chipmunks. There's yeah. It's they're a lot better looking chipmunks too than the uh, recent movie we just spoke about moments ago. <laughs> Um, okay, so that's coming out uh, in what May? May 9th. May 9th. Nice. You can pre order it now. And, and Dark Horse. Can, can people get a signed copy if they bring it to you at a. I uh, will be doing signings locally here in Minnesota. Um, I don't have a full schedule yet, but uh, lots of Barnes and Nobles, a few comic shops. We're going to be doing like throughout May and June, I believe. Okay, we got Matt in Minnesota. All right, and now we're going to transition from Matt in Minnesota over to Gerald in uh, in the East Coast world. <laughs> East Coast world. <laughs> I always I always thought calling Ohio and East and Michigan East Coast a weird thing. Yeah, it's not really on a coast. Mm-hmm. Unless you're talking about Lake Erie or I don't know. But anyway, but Gerald, um, you're, you mentioned voice acting earlier. Uh, you mentioned uh, your own graphic novel, correct? Bad Fables, not bad, not bad Fables. I'm sorry. Um, gray uh, areas. Gray areas. Yes. Gray areas. Mm -hmm. And you're, are you the artist on Gray Areas? I'm everything on Gray Areas. <laughs> you <laughs> are Gray Areas. Yeah. Gray four. Yeah. Um, big gray area. <laughs> yeah. Writing. You know, uh, penciling, inking, and coloring, and all that. Wearing um, all the hats, my friend. Yeah, it's a it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, if only there was yeah. a program that you can use. Yeah, right. If only there was a way to shortcut this. <laughs> yeah, <program>. yeah. <laughs> well, we must be the crazy ones. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, if anybody wants to learn more about the video games, the characters that you voiced, and the graphic novel, which has a, a second volume coming out soon, right? Yes, yes. Gray Areas Volume Two is coming soon. People have been asking for it since we launched the first one which is wow. a good thing but um are you self-publishing are you, are you i'm publishing? only one man so i'm self yeah self-published uh okay. self-published so yeah um yeah but you can still pick up gray areas volume one at the website it has all the links that'll take you to everything to find including my voice work so the the voice work i want to point out again there's an animated film star wars animated film coming out called the chosen one so that's a pretty cool place we can hear you and then i i noticed a this video game that's coming out this year called foolish mortals which has a decidedly uh haunted mansion-esque feel to it mm -hmm. that's pretty cool i i can't say much about star wars uh you know i gotta love those ndas but uh yeah foolish mortals uh working with them uh has been a, a blast um voicing Ned Kipps and the, the the demo the demo's out um with the Kickstarter and the Kickstarter just blew up I think it's like 400 uh, percent wow. over goal and um, I'm just excited to be a part of the world and be working with them um yeah and you know I'm justice in my time at Santa Rock so yeah the name of the game is justice in my time no at no no I voice justice, Your justice in the game. My time at Sand Rock. My yes. time at Sand Rock is the name of the game. Okay. Yes. Sorry, mm -hmm. I was like, that is a long title. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm just. I yeah. I, I portray. I voice justice. Um, well, you're the voice of justice. That's a pretty bold uh, thing to be able to do, huh? Yeah. The, the, his uh, justice is my name. Justice is my game. That's that's oh, one, his, uh, oh, one okay. of his lines. But uh, yeah, it's uh, Best Kevin Conroy impression, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, and you and I, I know that pre ordering games sometimes helps the the um production or, or the For sure, know, yeah. So I i, I pre ordered uh, the uh, what's it called, Foolish Mortals game on Steam, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so everybody else that has a Steam account, you should you should wish list it for sure. And there's a sale on my time at San Rock, not right now, it's still in early access. But um, oh, that's we'll be, cool. We'll be coming to all councils and everything. Oh, here, so that's pretty huge. You're going to be on the switch. Yes, yes. Yeah. Hey, that's yeah. very cool. The the funny thing is, my time at Sandrock is a sequel to a game called My Time at Porsche, which is already on Xbox, PlayStation, and Nintendo Switch. Um, so this is kind of like the a spinoff. It was going to going to originally be DLC, but now it's a, it became this whole game. So okay, yeah, we'll be following suit. We'll be on. Anything you can, everything you can play on. 
Look, I, I've known both of you gentlemen for probably over 10 years now. I, I, I know I met Gerald at, in Ohio mm-hmm. uh, through through our retail years, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that's been a long time ago. And then Forever. I met Matt in Chicago at uh, formerly known as Wizard World Chicago. Uh, may they rest in pieces. Mm. <laughs> um, uh, that was that was back in what was that, Matt? Uh, yeah. 2005? 2009. Was it nine? Oh, okay. Or 10, yeah. somewhere in there. Somewhere around there. Okay. Well, uh, it's it's great to still be connected with you. I, I appreciate the technology allowing for us to do this because we're clearly in three different corners of the United States right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I seriously want to thank you both for being here and discussing this incredibly important topic. I think the best solution is to, is to again, keep talking about this, keep producing genuine art and maybe maybe we come up with a hashtag that that we all collectively start to use Mm -hmm. as um as you know artists not using ai maybe there's something we can do with that i don't know but i'm open to suggestions and i think as long as we keep like uplifting each other that's a really good step in the right direction Mm -hmm. um any closing thoughts from matt or gerald either of you have anything else you want to close out with no, it's been great. I mean, yeah, it was been great. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're all of the like uh, like mind on this, but it 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 is still like you know hearing other people put out what's going on up here. You know, it's like okay, I'm not the only one who thinks this. There's yeah, we're all in. You know, well, I I debated bringing some non like minded folks on, but I thought for now for this outing, it might be good if I simply presented their points of view and we. And we talk about them without less cuss words. And... <laughs> I was trying to avoid too much conflict. More of a it. controlled yeah. environment. Uh, yeah. You know, like, yeah. yeah, I would rather there be discussion and less arguing. Personally, it's right. it's not it has nothing to do with not valuing other points. I just would rather the discussion be productive, in mm-hmm. in some way. Um, For sure. Maybe we'll do another one of these. Hopefully, you guys, if if uh, if you'd like to come back, we'll we'll do that. Um, but in the meantime, everyone check out, uh, both Gerald Hill and Matt went on social media. As always, you can find me on YouTube and other social media, uh, liking and commenting and subscribing always helps. I will be re-uploading this video, uh, probably either later tonight or early tomorrow. So please throw your attention at the re-upload on YouTube. So lots of people see it and then maybe we'll do some more. Um, thanks so much for being here, gents and, uh, have a great night. Good afternoon, good evening, good night.